The Four Last Things by Father Martin von Kochem Part 3 On Hell Chapter 4 Some Other Torments of Hell It is the opinion of many that some of the reprobates will be doomed among many other intolerable pains to endure a most fearfully intense cold The venerable beat relates the following anecdote of a man whose name was Trithelmus This man was dangerously sick and one night he was thought to be dead The next morning he recovered consciousness to the astonishment of all who were with him and rose from his sick bed saying that God had granted him a prolongation of days in order that he might lead a different life to that which he had hitherto led After dividing his property amongst his children and giving a portion of it to the poor he entered upon an excessively different mode of life shutting himself up in a small tent beside a river he spent his days and nights in weeping in winter time he plunged up to the throat into the icy waters of the river and then shivering and benumbed by the cold he immersed himself into hot water a proceeding which caused him such agony that he could not restrain his cries when questioned as to the reason of his strange conduct and how he could possibly bear the sudden alternatives of extreme heat and extreme cold he replied i have seen worse things than that what didst thou see the others asked him and he replied i have seen how the unhappy souls in another world are cast into a raging fire into icy cold and from icy cold back into the burning flames when i realize what they have to endure i count my slight sufferings as nothing this anecdote related by so grave and holy a man as venerable beat shows how terrible indeed are the torments of hell christ speaks to us of the darkness of hell in these solemn words bind his hands and feet and cast him into the exterior darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth our lord speaks of the darkness of hell as exterior darkness the most appalling the most fearful that can be a traveler who has lost his way in the forest and is benighted feels a nameless terror coming over him now there is a land which is covered with the shadow of death where no order but an eternal horror reigns that land is hell an oppressive gloom weighs upon the lost and indescribably terrible darkness prevails in this world sick people dread nothing more than the night because the time seems to pass so slowly to them and their pain seems doubtfully wearisome they count the hours and each one appears as long as the night what will it be for the denizens of hell where thick darkness holds sway the night never gives place to daylight in this horrible darkness the damned lie helpless as blind men or as those who have had their eyes cruelly put out they see nothing for the acrid smoke stings their eyes and the poisonous fumes of sulfur destroy their sight we know how dense this smoke is from the account given by saint john to him satan was given the key of the bottomless pit hell and he opened the bottomless pit and the smoke of the pit arose as the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened with the smoke of the pit and again they shall be tormented with fire and brimstone and the smoke of their torments shall ascend up forever and ever neither have they rest day or night these are indeed terrible threats and this prophecy foretells in a plainest terms what will be the fate of those who are servants of sin and of the devil they shall be tormented with fire and brimstone to such a degree that the smoke of their torment shall ascend up forever and ever o fearful words o torture inexpressible consider o misguided sinner what thy feelings would be if thou wert confined for one single day in this dark and noisome dungeon thou knowest how disagreeable pungent smoke is to thy eyes and nostrils 
In fact, no one can remain in it for a quarter of an hour without being asphyxiated and half blinded. If this is so on earth, what will it be in hell? The existence of the dam is more like death than life. It is a living death, an everlasting, unlimited torture and misery. And since we are told that the smoke of their torment goes up forever, it follows of necessity that complete darkness must prevail in hell. In connection with this subject, Venerable Bede relates the experience of the man Trithalmus, of whom mention has been already made, whilst he lays in a trance and was supposed to be dead. On recovering consciousness, amongst other things he narrated the following. I was conducted by being clothed in shining garments through a country quite unknown to me, until we came to a region enveloped in thick darkness that made me shudder with fear and horror. I could distinguish nothing but the figure of my guide. As we penetrated deeper and deeper into this obscurity, I perceived in the midst of the darkness an abyss of immense extent filled with smoke and lurid glare, the sight of which caused my hair to stand on terror with end. From this abyss proceeded piteous wailing, which sounded as if a number of men and women were being put to cruel torture and death. But the worst was that my guide vanished, leaving me alone in this terrible spot. I cannot describe the agonized apprehension that took possession of me. In vain I looked around in the hope of finding succor or solace. The terror I felt was so great that, that I thought I should have died. When I looked down into the black abyss, I was afraid lest I should fall into it and be lost body and soul. For with the lurid flames that rose out from the abyss, there came burning sparks that fell back into it with a deafening noise, besides masses of sulphur smoke-like clouds that seemed as if they might at any moment sweep me down with them into the depth of the fiery gulf. These were all lost souls which were driven upwards like sparks from burning logs by the force of the underground fire. God alone knows what I suffered. A cold sweat broke out all over me. While I stood there in this agony, not knowing which way to turn, there sounded from far above my head pearls of laughter and mingled with the laughter bitter weeping and howling. As this noise came nearer, I saw a number of devils who had with them five helpless souls whom they were persecuting and tormenting. These devils were in exultation, mocking and laughing, and the souls were in despair, uttering lamentations and cries of poignant anguish. Imagine what my feelings were when I heard their cries, and observed that the accursed devils were coming nearer and nearer. When they came close up to me, I was so overpowered with terror that I thought I should have fainted, and I believe if God had not strengthened me, I should have died there and then. The demons glared at me with their fiery eyes in so alarming a fashion, and the poor souls called on me so pitifully for help that I was divided between fear and compassion, and my heart was as if it must break. When the souls had been driven past me, they were precipitated into the depth of the abyss of the evil spirits with such violence that heaven and earth seemed to tremble and such a cloud of sparks flew upwards that I was afraid they would cover me. Finally, to my great grief and alarm, a number of evil spirits approached me, breathing rage and fury, and making as if they would drag me down with them into the black abyss. Then in abject terror, I wept and wailed and implored help for some quarter, for in this dense darkness I beheld nothing but mocking devils the yawning gulf and leaping flames, and knew not whither to, whither to turn for deliverance. When my distress was at its height, my guide reappeared. He rescued me from my enemies and conducted me out of that dark, foul, horrible place. He told me, moreover, that I was to return to my body and that I was to make known to as many as possible of my fellow men the existence of this land of terrible darkness. 
In addition to the sinister obscurity that prevails in hell, caused by the stifling smoke that rises in dense clouds from the lake of brimstone, there is the presence of frightful demons who increase the pain and torment of the damned. We read in the legend of Saint Anthony the Hermit that the demons frequently appear to him under various forms, plaguing and frightening him in indescribable ways. Sometimes they took the shape of wild beasts, lions, bears, dragons of savage dogs. At other times they appeared in human form, that of fierce-looking men, beautiful women, or monsters of hideous aspect. Sometimes they beat and maltreated him so barbarously that they left him half dead. Sometimes they caused him such terror by their strange spectral apparitions that had not God and his angel guardian come to his aid, he would have incontinently expired. Now if they did all this to a man of saintly life over whom they had no rightful power, what will they not do in hell to the ungodly sinners who are completely at their mercy? Doubtless, these diabolical spectres, assuming the shape of wild animals, will fall upon the wretched sinners and mishandle them shamefully. This will be a fresh misery for them. No one can imagine what new terrors and torments the ingenuity of these spirits of hell will devise to harass the damned and pour out on them their devilish malice. If thou dost fear this darkness and all the horrors attending it, see that thou fear the works of darkness, whereof Christ says, Every one that doeth evil hateth the light, and cometh not to the light, that his works may not be reproved. But if thou lovest darkness, and seekest the darkness, that thou mayest sin in greater impunity, it will be no act of injustice on God's part to cast thee into everlasting darkness, and at thy death to say to the devils, Because throughout his life he has loved darkness and the works of darkness, bind his hands and his feet, and cast him into the exterior darkness, where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Would that all obdurate sinners could see this, and consider the frightful torments which await the careless and indifferent. For in that wherein we have sinned, we shall also be punished. And as in our own day there are many so tepid and negligent Christians, who have not the slightest zeal for religion or religious exercises, we bid them beware, lest they be one day cast into hellfire at the command of him who calls himself a jealous God and who is alone to be feared, because he can destroy both body and soul into hell. Wherefore, consider, O cold and careless Christians, what a fate is before you. Truly, were you to reflect upon these frightful torments, you would at once enter upon a new life. Instead of being tepid, sluggish, lax, cold Christians, you would quickly become zealous, active, scrupulous, fervent servants of God. Away then with all tepidity, all indifference in the great business of our salvation. Whosoever thou art who readest this, resolve to fulfill thy duties as a Christian with all earnestness. Approach the sacraments more frequently than thou hast done hitherto. Hear Mass more frequently than hitherto. Be more instant and fervent in prayer than hitherto. Think more often of God and of the last things. Thus will thou surmount the indifference, the coldness that has crept over thee. Thou wilt make God thy friend. The hope of eternal felicity will rise up within thee and become a blessed certainty. God grant that by his grace it may be so with thee and with me. Amen.